One thing you know when you come on here to talk about wrestling, and you do it for any length of time, you're going to have to talk about wrestlers passing away, wrestlers dying for a variety of different reasons. It comes with the territory. It really does. And in some cases, you have to talk about wrestlers that you really respected and you really admired and you were a big fan of or as a kid you hated but you grew to like appreciate and love their work and you know this week it presents yet another situation of having to do this another legend of the professional wrestling scene has passed away mr wonderful paul orndorff uh, died earlier this week at the age of, I believe it was, 71 due to, we are assuming, complications from uh, dementia. And yeah, for those of you that remember watching this shit back when it was the old Off the Rope Show channel, you remember Tony and I used to be very big on Mr. Wonderful. Who is Paul Orndorff? Mr. Wonderful. Who is Mr. Wonderful? Paul Orndorff. When somebody else would say something, that's wonderful or he's wonderful. Eh, wrong. There's only one Mr. Wonderful and who is that? Paul Orndorff. Why? Because he's Mr. Wonderful. It's one of those self-evident truths. You didn't have to say it, but you still wanted to say it because the man was a legend. What a, what a career he had. And I think... Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff is an example of one of those guys that it's sad that it takes his passing uh, for him in some ways to get the respect that he truly deserves. Like this is a guy going back to his days uh, growing up in Florida. He was the Brandon Bull, if you remember hearing about that later in life. Uh, he played at the University of Tampa, was a, a star player there, then later went on and was in NFL camp at one point in time, I believe, I think it was either in 73 or 74, he was actually in Chicago Bears uh, training camp. He eventually tried playing in the World Football League for a year. There was a World Football League in the mid-70s uh, before he decided to give professional wrestling a shot and made his way throughout the scene over the years, worked back in the mid-late 70s with a young Jerry Lawler, worked with the big cat, Ernie Ladd, and won championships in different territories in different places. But ultimately, when he came to the WWF in 1983, that was the beginning of the best run of his wrestling career. There is no question about it. There are certain people that you can absolutely talk about with professional wrestling and you say, they're one of a select few. When you think about Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, He's one of the few that could ever say they main evented WrestleMania 1. And they weren't there on the sidelines. They weren't there in the corner. They weren't there as a referee or ring announcer or timekeeper or anything like that. Like one of the featured combatants in the main event of WrestleMania 1. That's Hulk Hogan, Mr. T, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Now, when you think about the 1980s, and son of a bitch, when you think back to the 80s and you think about pop culture in this country, those were three dudes right there. Are you kidding me? Hulk Hogan, Mr. T, Rowdy Roddy Piper, and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Now, all the things you talk about with Mr. Wonderful, seems like so often people forget about the fact they want to focus on him whooping Vader's ass <laughs> and where he's wearing flip-flops. Uh, they forget the fact that this is a guy that main evented WrestleMania 1. They want to forget about the fact that to this day, one of the most notable, one of the most financially successful feuds in WWF slash WWE history in Hogan's career for all the years that it extended, it was Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. You can put that feud up almost in the category of with Andre, and that's saying something. Like the Andre feud, you know, they started multiple pay-per-views. The big four pay-per-views were all created outside of WrestleMania, but Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, they all in some way were created off of the back of the power of the success of Hogan and Andre. But that was 87 and 88. 1986 
Once Hogan got past King Kong Bundy at WrestleMania 2 in the steel cage match in LA, in the old blue bar steel cage, it was Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff that traveled the world with him and did massive business. Like you've probably heard about the event at the CN Center in Toronto in 86. And you, know, you think about to this day, some of the huge reactions Hogan got in Toronto over the years, whether it's at the Sky Dome at WrestleMania 6 or again at WrestleMania 18 against The Rock, you know, in Montreal. You know, think about how many Hogan fans there were in Canada during his career. Mr. Orndorff, Paul, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, excuse me, I'm all kind of flustered here, um, played no small part in that at all. He's a big part of it. Like when you think about wrestling, and when I think about wrestling, and I think about what wrestling misses, you miss somebody like a Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, a guy that at times could sit there and be right about things. Like, for example, the whole thing about getting pissed off about he wants to work a match with Hulk Hogan, he wants to have a tag team partner, and he wants to call Hulk Hogan, and Hogan's too busy working out in the gym to answer Mr. Wonderful's call. Of course Paul's going to be pissed. He should be pissed. But it was that thing of, like, even though the heel, the villain, had a point, at the end of the day, he did dastardly, nasty things that made you hate him and he wanted people to hate him. And by God, he did. The old raisin Hogan's arm and then clotheslining him and then pile driving him. When people think about the pile driver, they think about The Undertaker. They think about Jerry the King Waller. Not enough people think about Paul Orndorff. That was his big move and you know he executed it incredibly well. And <laughs> outside of maybe one time in WCW, huh? <laughs> but in all seriousness, you know, this is a guy that I'm just a huge fan of because he took the business seriously, took himself seriously, but not too seriously. Like, he was a legit dude. You could look at him and you could say, that looks like a fucking professional wrestler. That looks like somebody I don't want to damn mess with and trifle with. I mean, real talk. So, you know, his legacy beyond going to WCW in the 90s and the epicness of Gary Spivey and the Psychic Friends Network. <laughs> I am Mr. Wonderful. I am Mr. Wonderful. You are right, Paul Orndorff. You were, are, and always will be the Mr. Wonderful. To whoop Invader's ass with flip-flops on. <laughs> if you don't know the story, freaking look it up. Point being... Leon, Vader, rest his soul too. He wasn't exactly a small dude. You're talking about 400 pound dude. And Orndorff legit whooped his ass. To the point where I think he messed up his feet because he was kicking his ass with shower flip flops on. <laughs> but all the wrestlers that he helped down at the power plant and etc. Like, you know, I think, I think about Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Great gimmick. Great performer. Legit dude, legit badass. We could use more people like him in professional wrestling today. So yes, it broke my heart in recent weeks seeing the footage of him um, in really, really rough shape. And a lot of people are talking about for the his son, I guess, who had posted it, like how dare he and why would you show him in that type of light? Look, here's my thing. You know, we shouldn't, if, we, if we're really fans of somebody and we really respect them, yeah, we can respect their privacy and everything else. But, you know, damn it, he was still a person too. And we shouldn't feel so awkward and so afraid of somebody who's still trying to live their life to the best of their abilities. And even if dementia had robbed him of his memories and even if dementia had robbed him of a lot of his abilities and his functions, like he was still a person, he was still a human being. And it's important for people to see that side too. Like when we have people that are maybe close to death, we, we always sit there and we want to mock or we talk about it and be like, oh, we don't want to see that. Well, why not? Think about if you were in that spot. Would you want people avoiding you like the plague? Would that be right? So I get it. It's tough to see. It was absolutely tough to see. It's still tough to think about. It's still tough to me to think about where I'm at in my life and so many of these guys that I watched over the years in professional wrestling are gone. Like, I, I admit, like, at least I can say with Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, like, 
Maybe he didn't get to do everything he wanted to do in professional wrestling because you even think back to 86, he had the neck injury and he tried to wrestle through it and eventually had some of the challenges with the arm atrophy because of that injury. Um, but, you know, you get, kind of get tired of having to talk about all these guys passing away. Oh, he, he made it to 71, so, I mean, it's not exactly like he had an incredibly short life, but sometimes it can be hard to reconcile. And for the era that I grew up in especially, like, so many of these guys that I watched as a kid, as I watched over the years, are gone now. And you could probably look at this channel for the eight years that it's been here, and before that, the Off the Rope Show channel, and, you know, find videos of me talking about different wrestlers passing. Like, yeah, it's kind of a depressing thing to think about sometimes, honestly. I've been doing this so long, and I know the videos don't exist anymore because that old channel is gone, but, you know... A decade ago, I was doing videos talking about the life and career and legacy of the just deceased Macho Man Randy Savage. And here I am a decade later, still alive, still standing. Sorry for some of you that that bothers. But having to think about, you know, now here I am, Mr. Wonderful. Somebody who is one of those characters that, one of those guys from the past that on our old channel, like, we used to talk about and we used to speak about in glowing praises, like, you know, Mr. Bob Backlund and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orner. And God damn it, we had respect for these legends and Psycho Sid and, you know what I mean? The real men, the real wrestlers. It's unfortunate, but, you know, when I think about Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, there are lots of memories I will think of, but I will certainly think about, you know, him and his run with Hogan. Like, I, I, I've never felt like Paul Orndorff got the credit that he deserved for just how big of a star he was and how much of a drawing card he was. Like, you could say that was all Hogan. That was all Hogan. Hogan was a part of it, but so was the guy that was his dance partner. So was the guy who he was feuding with. So was the guy that had all the heat on him because fans were legitimately pissed that he went the Benedict Arnold route after him and Hogan were friends and lifting buddies and so much and so forth for so long. Again, the best thing I could say is when you see some of these wrestlers of the past, these legends, and you're fortunate enough to be able to go to conventions, autograph signings of different things, as much as you might want a picture with them, you might want to autograph with them, just tell them how much you appreciate them. Thank them. Show your support for them. Show that you're thinking about them. And do it while you still can. Because, you know, just like here and now. Like, unfortunately, it's a bad habit. We wait until these guys pass away before we talk about them and, you know, really speak about what they meant to us and, you know, how awesome or great that we thought they were. And that, that's a shame. That's a shame. Well, Mr. Wonderful certainly is a legend, worthy Hall of Famer of any wrestling Hall of Fame, and will be one of those wrestlers that I truly do remember and respect for the rest of my life.